So welcome everybody. My name is Alicia Gallegos Butters, and I have the pleasure of working at the San Diego County Office of Ed, just down the road from all of you. Um, I have been there now for about 11 years. And um, in the past three years, I have started working in the realm of esports, among other things with educational technology. Um, I work with closely with Dr. Michan Hochter Thompson and um, Ms. Pamela Rabin. They're not here tonight, but they've been with me along the way on this esports journey. So I want to make sure I always give them credit for um, the work that they've done with me. So if you could take a moment and just in the um, chat, if you could just let me know, where are you in your eSport journey? So are you looking to start a team? Do you have a really competitive team? Are you just trying to gather information? Just if you could put some information in there so I can kind of get an idea of um, who is in the room. And if you want to let me know what your role is, that's fine as well. And I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay, so the objectives of today are to talk a little bit about how to get started with the program, to let you know a little bit about the organizations that we've partnered with in the past, a little bit about tournaments, and where do we go from here? And I'm thinking of the collective, in some ways I'm thinking of California, but I'm also thinking about San Diego, and how do we grow this this thing that we're calling esports or gaming right now. And I see that some information is coming in. So we have people um, investigating, okay, just getting started, would like to start a team, awesome. Compe so we have some competitive teams, good. Dennis, yeah, you're a couple years in. Okay, great, great. So we have a really diverse crowd here. And that's that's great because I always like to joke that um, California right now, we're in the wild, wild west of esports. So everybody is in different places. And I'm gonna talk about what those different places are right now or as we move forward and the path. But before I do that, I do wanna give you a little bit of history of how I got started in these sports. So number one, not a gamer. Don't play video games. Um, I come from an era of, um, remember those that, that one that you would hold in your hand, I'm gonna date myself and it was football and you'd make it go fast and you'd move it to the side and then you could like, that was kind of my game. And then we came up with Pong on the TV and you would like play tennis. So those were kind of my games. I also, I loved, um, I loved Ms. Pac-Man. I knew the pattern for the first couple um, levels. And then after like level five, I was a goner. Loved Centipede, still play Centipede. And I loved Frogger. So that's kind of my era of gaming. And I I've never been um, a modern day gamer. So with that said, how did I get into this gaming? Well, about um, two years ago, my boss, who's no longer at the San Diego County Office of Ed, said, Alicia, you're the director of ed tech. I think that esports should fall under ed tech. And I was like, OK, yeah. And I thought in my head, how long can I blow this off and not do it? Well, that didn't last very long because um, I started researching. And what I started finding, and you all, you wouldn't be here if you didn't know all the positives about esports and, and gaming online. But what I really found out was that it was good for kids. And if it's something that's good for kids and it brings kids to school in a way that they haven't come to school to, or 
they haven't been attracted to school before, then I'm all for it. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm in, I'm going to do what I can to make this happen. And so that's what I've been doing over the past two years, including just a, a meeting I got off of in a few, a few minutes ago before this one, which I'll talk to you about with a, one of our partners. So that's how I got involved in it. All right. So SDCOE, we're county office. So we have kind of um, different goals. We don't have goals like a school district goals, um, or maybe we do, They're, but our goal is to really build a countywide eSport league. And it's not to say that we're not partnering with H high school eSport league or NASAF. We are, but we want a place where a centralized location where our schools in San Diego County can get information. We want to have a database where they can play, they can like say, okay, I'm looking for someone who plays League of Legends and they're a startup team. So we're not sending our double black diamonds out to play with our, um, our bronze players. So we wanted to put something like that together. So that's one of our goals at the county office. We want to make sure we're engaging students. So we want to see those students who have not been at schools or going to school before, or who have really minimal interest in schools, gain an interest in school. So that's something else. Um, another one that's huge on our list is the integration of curriculum. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what that looks like for us. We're not stepping on NASAF's toes with curriculum, because we know that they're the champions, but we're really partnering with them. And I'll talk about what that is. I spoke of that support and we are doing tournaments, but I'll have to be honest with you. I'm, I'm hoping to kind of move away from the tournaments and I'll, I'll tell you why in a little bit. Any questions about that? So this, this is a um, image of one of our first tournaments that we did, it was a League of Legends tournament. And it was phenomenal. And because of this tournament, I may not want to move too far away from tournaments, but I really need to weigh that. And so I, again, Wild West, everything's kind of moving in directions and I'm trying to navigate how to do those. Um, if you have a question, we're a small group and you want to unmute yourself, just please feel free to do that. Okay, so benefits of esports. This was a this was a video that our ITV um, team took, and it, they did it at the beginning, or right before the pandemic. So I'm going to show the video. It was really a great, um, just kind of goes over those benefits. We wanted to make sure it was a really loud, strong video because we wanted to draw people in. And so it does talk about some things from a couple years ago, but it's really cool, and I'll talk about why it means so much to me with these particular students. Let me play that. Esports, which is short for electronic sports, is really not about the game itself. It really promotes that idea of strategic thinking, different skills. I used to like, I, I couldn't focus at all. Like, if I was listening to a teacher talk, I would zone out and then like, I wouldn't understand what they were saying. So what gaming has done for me, there's something called like the flow, mainly all about focus and how you can focus on something. It's not just a simple activity of looking at a game and using your thumbs to make something happen on the screen. The research points to uh, how the brain changes, how the brain adapts to situations, how problem solving skills, how quick pivoting in the middle of a moment of uh, clutch while you're playing a game, come into play that mimic what we're doing in math class, in a statistics class or in a science class. Uh, more than that, though, I think much like in a classroom environment, video games now are teaching a social emotional learning content where kids are having to, instead of being the one really cool guy who can do something on his or her own, need to be part of a club. So they're performing as part of a team, just like they have to in class projects. For example, League of Legends is a game where you have to think all the time, 24-7 thinking, strategizing, communicating with your teammates, making sure that everyone agrees to the plan, and, and then executing the plan. So it builds uh, relationships between you and your team members. It helps you think more on your feet, and it just helps you react better. There's a lot of people that like 
to think that they could carry the whole team by themselves. But those are the people who usually like do bad throughout the whole game. I never really talk to people that much in school. I was usually really shy. And then like one of my best friends from seventh grade, he told me to come and tell him and to join since there were one player, player down. And from there, I was like, I don't really know because I'm really nervous. And I really do bad when I'm nervous, like right now. <laughs> so it's like, like a like a brother and brother bond or brother and sister. If there's any girls, yeah. Even though like half the amount of gamers are girls, I think as a woman, it's not culturally acceptable to be a gamer just yet. I think it's becoming better. I've always loved gaming since I was really young. Before becoming a teacher, I would play games all the time, and then I became an English teacher and. I felt like there was just a need for it. We are actually doing an all girls event uh, on December 20th here at the Microsoft store in Fashion Valley. And it's gonna be on Minecraft and it's specifically for girls. On November 1st, we had a showcase event to really demonstrate the power of esports because it's really about teamwork, collaboration, competition. I'm an old school gamer. And, and so, you know, I really believe that, you know, gaming is a kind of a vehicle to really help engage kids. You know, we want to make sure that we offer a safe place for our kids to really participate in this activity. Any way we can help promote, support, you know, provide guidance to our district is what we want to do. So that's, that's something that I was really proud of that we did. And um, a little something about those, those students. Those students are part of our Monarch School that were featured. And they are students who are experiencing homelessness. This particular group of students have graduated. They graduated last um, in June, this past June. And what we heard from them when they graduated was that this event, the um, big tournament that we did was the best thing that they did all their entire high school career. And um, one of the students, I, I won't say whom, but his parents were both um, in prison. He was living on his own and he had the option of going to our boarding school or staying at Monarch. And he chose to stay at Monarch because of the eSport program. And he is now um, a computer science major at our local community college. And I'm gonna cry when I say it because he said it was because of this program. And so for me, that's why I do eSports. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. When I hear stories like that from our students and um, how they really, how it changes their lives. So I'm going to pull myself together and I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, just the, the reason, some other reasons why um, and how you could get started with the team on your campus. And I rarely get emotional. So that was kind of a shock. So um, this is just a quote from um, Ang Angelique, and she's one of our esports champions here in San Diego County. And um, a lot of times I turn to her for advice because she's actually there with the student. She's their coach. She leads those students in a way that's really inspirational. Okay, so some of you may not realize, but there are eSport scholarships across the United States. Um, UC Irvine is one of our, um, in California, it's one of the powerhouses. And so we also like to promote this. So students do know that there is that pathway school to college, but there's also that pathway of school to career. Okay, so getting started. So for those of you that are wondering how you get started, and then we'll go in the ecosystem of what that's gonna look like in a minute. The first thing that I cannot stress to you enough is you want to talk to your administration about it. You want to seek approval. Um, and with that, you want to be really honest about the games you're going to use or you're going to play. I don't know how many meetings I've been in when a game has been or the teacher says, I'm going to play X, Y, Z, and it ends up being a major issue. So you want your administrators backing on that prior to the event. So um, that's huge. Then what you wanna do is you wanna do 
a campus wide survey. And I am willing, I'll share this with all of you, but that survey should, I just clicked on it, it should come up, but it sound, looks like my computer's running a little slow. Here it is. It's an esports interest survey. And you want to send this out campus wide to get this information from your students. You also, this question is very important. What type of gaming cons or what type of gaming do they prefer? You need to know what you're dealing with. And then you want to know what games. Okay. You also need to know uh, if it's going to be a team or a club. And I'll talk a little bit about what the difference is on those. So send out that campus wide email. Then you want to hold that meeting with interested students. You want to do that before you send, or you want to do that after you send out that campus wide email because I've heard of teachers who have just put flyers around their school. And then what ends, and they say, come to my classroom, come to Ms. Gallegos' classroom. And then over 150 students show up. And then you're dealing with fire code issues. And right away, there are neg negative thoughts about it at the school. But if you know right away, okay, it's going to be 150 students. I'm going to do this in the, the cafeteria, or I have a space. I could do it during lunch, but at different times that's gonna be better. So be organized from the very beginning. Once you have those interested students, you've gone over all of that, you wanna hold a parent meeting and you want your administration at that parent meeting. You also, and you do not need to do this, but you wanna sign up for an organization. Again, you do not need to do this, but it's good if you sign up for like HSEL or NASAP. There's also Play Versus, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Students can play on their own console. They can play with their own um, with their own logins. My only concern about that is that some students will have their own logins to games that they have to play or that they have to pay to play, whereas other students won't, and then it becomes an, an equity issue. And you want to make sure that you're dealing with those equity issues. And that's why you may want to sign up with one of those organizations. And then you begin to play. Oops, sorry. And then you begin to play. And that happens after school. And again, you do not need to sign up for a tournament, but tournaments are also fun. And you might want to look to um, your county offices to see or your district offices to see if they have certain um, teams that you can play against. So those are always really good to do. And most important, you want a code of conduct. And that code of conduct is gonna help your students know how to behave while playing a game. So a lot of times there is um, misogyny in there, there's foul language, there's students not getting great grades, and if you have that code of conduct beforehand, it's almost like a rubric. There's no surprises. Students know this is what's expected of me. Okay, so that's that's the way you want to get started. But before that, there's really kind of three tiers, three tiers of um, thinking when it comes to gaming on your campus. There's the after school gamer. And I like to say the after school gamer is just that kid who likes to play. Maybe they want to play chess. Maybe they like Minecraft. Maybe they like Among Us. Maybe they like um, LOL. Maybe they like Super Smash Brothers, Rocket League. They, they don't want to be the next ninja. They're not interested. They're, they just want to play. So are you going to have a space for those people? And those people, those students are usually, they go through after school clubs, just really simple. Then there's that school gamer. And the school gamer is the person that I like to think of, something has sparked in them. And they're like, I wanna make this a career. And it doesn't just have to be the career that we all think about, which is the um, computer science. But these are the students that maybe want to be shoutcasters, or they maybe want to be physicians that only deal with gaming, or they want to be a coach, or they want to be a 
artist, but create for games. So there should be some place for those students that you really think about that curriculum pathway for them. And then you have that competitive gamer. And the competitive gamer is the one that is, um, they wanna be the next ninja or they wanna go to college on a scholarship with it. So you start to have these different tiers. They're the ones that wanna play other schools as well, okay? So those are what you have as far as um, your, your tiers at your school. Some schools have all three tiers because they're such large schools and they know they're gonna need all of these people. Other ones are like, we're just sticking to after school. And then we're gonna go the CTE route and we're gonna do school gamer as well. And they don't even wanna deal with competitive gamers. It's really up to you. But I do suggest thinking about those three games, those three levels. Um, any questions so far? And I'm gonna just check the chat really fast. Alicia? Yes, of course. Someone asked if there's a link to the Google Slides. Um, yes, I will get that out to you guys. Thank Actually, you. let me just put that in. I'll put it in the chat right now for you. Thank you. And the video is not in there. For some reason, it's not connecting, but I'll reconnect that in there for all of you. Okay. Okay. Now, once you've kind of figured out where you are, and I, I sometimes hesitate to show this, but this is my ecosystem. And this is what I put together like in, in, a, in an ideal world, if I were in charge of all schools and all e-gaming and all of that, I would want this ecosystem. And I, I tend to look at things like, okay, these are, this is my e-sports approach. It's in the middle. And what are all the systems that, or what is everything that could kind of feed into esports? And I did a brain dump one day and I'm like, okay, well, there's curriculum that can feed into that. Yay, curriculum. There's events, there's pathways, there are um, conferences like this. There's East, I want to do esport regional labs. Um, Parents need to be involved because if parents are anti esports, then you're not going to get this off the ground. Um, I, in a, in some cases, I was thinking, should we think about doing some school wide integration with esports? And then, of course, colleges, after school programs, and professional learning. And so, what I did is I broke it up into what would each one of those look like, and I started thinking about how would I measure those when I put together this ecosystem. And so every year what I do is I concentrate on a couple features of this ecosystem. So this year, what I'm concentrating on are parents. So I wanna to put together a San Diego County parent network, which will um, be a place where parents can ask questions, they can seek advice, they could even think about colleges and, um, but even if they have, they're, they're worried their child's having a gaming addiction. Where, so I want that network, that parent network. And I'm working on college. And I'll talk to you a little bit about what that's looking like right now. Last year, I worked on putting together a network of eSport coaches. And we have that going on in San Diego County right now. And we meet about every three about every two months. And it's a really great place where people talk. And I put together a steering committee where they, they make a lot of decisions about what happens in San Diego County. And then we also, I've already worked with the after school program. So that's something that I did the first year. We've worked with curriculum. And then we last year we worked with events. So every year I try to tackle a section on this, um, on this ecosystem. Any questions about it? Yeah. Conduct enforced. So typically a code of conduct, it would be like any other club code of conduct. 
So um, you you give your students the list of your your kind of rules or the code of conduct, and they sign it. They sign it with their parents, and you monitor what happens inside the classroom. If you have a Discord, you would monitor that Discord. I I monitor our Discord with bot a bot, and so that bot picks up on um, language and um foul like any words that they're not supposed to use but i always tell people it's not so different how you handle your classroom i was a seventh grade english teacher and i handled my club in the same way i handled my classroom i'm i'm present i'm walking around i'm engaging with students if i see behavior that's not becoming and it doesn't fit the code of conduct students are pulled out they know what the consequences are but they also get praised for when they're doing the right thing. So again, I, I try to handle it as, as much as very as similar as I did in my classrooms. Other questions? So every year, like I said, I try to hand I try to tackle another section of this um, esport ecosystem. And I try to enhance it every year. And they're built, this is actually built into my annual work plan and my goals. Um, the one I'm gonna talk about this year that I'm I'm making, I'm really working on and I'm super proud about. I'll talk about that. Let me move on to it. Oh, this is just another quote from one of our teachers, Mark Rounds. He retired last year. Okay, um, I'll get back to the network one. So um, I'm gonna go into the mentoring one and then I'll go back. So this year, my focus is really that college, go for students to go to college. Last year, we, we um, piloted a mentor program with Pepperdine University and it was really great. What we did is each month students met with Pepperdine University students and they talked about what it meant to be a good gamer, um, what that type of behavior looked like, but they also talked about what it was like to balance college and um, I'm fading in. Let me take off my, my background really quick because I see I'm fading in and out as it gets darker. Okay, there we go. And let me turn on my light really quick so it gets a little lighter. Okay. There, that's better. All right, so um, we partnered with them and it was like, what does is, what is good gaming mean? And what does it mean um, to be a gamer in college? And that was a huge part of it. We learned a lot from that partnership. It was all virtual. So it was with one of our high schools. And what we learned is that students did not want to work with college students unless they played them. They wanted play. They wanted those college students to prove their street cred, and they were not willing to listen to them until they proved they were worthy of listening to. That was a bit of a problem um, because Pepperdine had some very strict rules about student interaction, like college student, high school student interaction. So I'm glad we piloted it. Because this year we're now working on, on that again, the mentor program is going to be kicking off um, right after the new year. And it's going to be kicking off with UCSD, which is a local college for us. And they are all for, yes, we will play them. You know, UCSD, the Tritons are like, we're gonna beat, beat those high school students. So we partnered with um, Sweetwater School District and we're still going over all of those good gaming and college, but they're working towards a goal. And the goal that they're working for is the high school and UCSD are putting to putting on a tournament at the end of the year. And so it's going to be a joint tournament and it's going to be for all of San Diego County. And I'm super excited about it. And it's going to be hosted on the college campus. Now, why that is so, I'm so passionate about it is, is the way San Diego County is, is UCSD has always been pretty inaccessible to a lot of our students. It's in La Jolla. And La Jolla is considered one of the most um, expensive zip codes in the nation. 
San Diego County has just opened a trolley that extends from the border and it stops you right there in the heart of UCSD. The school district we're partnering with is Sweetwater School District, which is at the border. So for many of these students, it will be a direct, literally a direct pathway from their neighborhood to UCSD via gaming. And I am so excited about it. And so that mentor program is going to be huge for us in San Diego County. And I'm really hoping to show that um, it makes an impact in what happens in our communities here. And, and so I'm hoping that the gaming can do that for us. So um, that's all that came from, let me show you again, going back my ecosystem and that college pathway. So again, this is kind of my North Star. And if you don't have one in your school or your district, I would suggest creating one because this is what's gonna guide you to, to doing what you know you need to do. And I go back to this all the time. When I feel lost, I go back to this. Any questions about that? Another component. Oh yes, Rochelle. Rachel. Well, I was just clarifying. So, so in this example, are each one of those yellow bubbles something that you work on each year, and then from that, are those descriptors off of that kind of? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I select like some of them I haven't gotten to as much as I would like, and I plan to do it the following year. For instance, the regional labs that. I won't be doing till next year, partly because um, that takes a lot of funding. So I'm putting like the, I'm letting our, our, we have a foundation that works with us at the county and I'm letting them know that that's something that I wanna work on. So I'm starting, like I'm every, I'm kind of like working towards that every year. Okay. Got yeah. It. Thank you. Of course. Now, the other thing that is very important and I always have to put this in, make nice with your IT staff because your IT staff will be the, the makers or breakers of this. They will go the extra mile for you or they will kibosh you on things. So an example is um, we really wanna get esports into our, our um, juvenile detention centers. And um, we need ITS to help us with it. And so we're working with them on that. Okay. Um, the other one is curriculum. This is curriculum we created with our um, partners at NASAP. And this is the Good Gamer curriculum. This has really worked nicely because we use it for both the gaming, but we also have used it for our mentoring. Our mentors pick stuff out of this when they're teaching our students or working with our students. Okay. And um, and that's, that's what we're doing here at the San Diego County Office of Ed with our esports ecosystem. So questions? And please feel free to ask. Thank you, Dennis. You know, that came from many conversations with my partners at Riverside as well. So none of this is done in a, in, in a silo. We're, we're all working together trying to figure this out because again, it's a, it's, it's so, it could be so large and it's hard to figure out um, a guide, how to guide yourself through it. So I do wanna let you know, um, my email is there at the beginning. It's abutters at sdcoe.net. If you have questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, I'm here to help. And I like my goal, I have about um, five years left before I, re I retire. And I would really like to see this spread throughout California in a way that we're, we're supporting students. And we're really, 
doing something special for them in a different, in a way that we never imagined. No, Alicia, I like uh, that you mentioned your county's uh, foundation. So that was uh, in Riverside County. Uh, that was a great partnership when we spoke with them. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, we talked about the idea of wanting to start to give uh, scholarship awards to students through uh, via esports. And um, it was the foundation who loved that idea and they ran with it. And they are, you know, I'm not a businessman. <laughs> I don't, you know, they ran with that idea and, and they started reaching out to um, businesses, uh, to vendors uh, to start to get them to give money to build a pot so that we can start to give out scholarships. And, uh, and, and that's what we're doing now. But it was really because of, like you said, building that partnership. Yeah. And I think our foundations do love that, that when you start giving them the statistics and they see and they can actually talk to students. So in that video, it was, it was two actual events. So the first event was bringing in students and our foundation was there and they got to meet those students and they started hearing the student stories. And then the second one was our League of Legends tournament, which was covered by every news station in San Diego, which was huge. We were on the morning news and just getting that word out there that we're here and we're doing that. With COVID last year, it kind of quieted down a little bit. So we're ramping up again. Um, I did see somebody asked, are there opportunities for students under 13? Absolutely. We did a Minecraft tournament with um, our, K, our K-5 students, and they did a phenomenal job with Minecraft. Um, typically, there's also chess now available. There's a lot of games for students um, in elementary school. So yes, you just have to really research that. But again, you want to get the parents um, on it. Okay, any other questions? Thank you, Alicia, that was awesome. Well, I'm pleased to do it. Thank you so much. Hey, and as Gracia just reminded everybody in, in the chat, um, we have our closing panel discussion coming coming up at, at, at 610. That's something that you're going to that you're going to want to see. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Alicia, for everything. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, we will see you at 610. Alicia, actually, yes, I actually have a question. Yes, Adrian. So we're trying to get this started at uh, the in Santa Rosa City Schools, right? And uh, I'm the director of technology here. So what I hear, you know, I was just listening in a few sessions today. So the first thing that comes out to mind is like toxic behavior, conduct, conduct, stuff like this. I mean, and it's normal, you know, to, to have this kind of fear. So I am trying to figure out what, from a district perspective, what are the best ways to, you know, uh, basically protect our staff too, you know, if you think of it, because, you know, bullying happens in, on, on these kind of sessions and so yeah what i tell people is that this is no different from your classroom mm -hmm. you know if good teaching is good teaching good discipline is good discipline and um the platform has changed but that doesn't mean that your standards have changed and that doesn't mean your expectations have changed and again um a teacher needs to be aware of just because a student is online it doesn't mean that their behavior, there's no standards for their behavior. There are consequences for their behavior. And most students, it is very rare for students to act up in esports if they know their expectations because it is such a privilege to be playing and to be doing this at school. And um, you know, it look at it in the same way as your other sports on campus or your other after school clubs on campus. Mm -hmm. And those expectations need to be there. And if, if you as a district or you as a school say, okay, to participate on an esport team, you need to have at least a C average, then you need to stick to that. 
Um, you need to not have any um, suspensions. Then you have to stick to those things. You can't have more than um, five unexcused absences. Those are things that you would expect in a regular um, after school program or club or sport program. So you, you hold your students to the same. Where people get afraid is they think, oh, I can't manage um, these virtual environments. Well, that's where the IT di directors can come up with instances that are spun up just for their, their schools. And you can, you, you can have discords that are monitored. You can have Zoom sessions where students are playing that are monitored. Yeah, I hear there are some some uh, some vendors they offer some software actually, um, but it only applies to machines that are actually act, uh, running in the environment in my environment that, that I control, right? right? But I hear of other uh, ones that have like a bring your own device kind of model, right? How would you monitor that? How would you enforce uh, uh, discipline there? Well, you discipline just my, my students bring their own computers all the time. And I monitor what they're doing on their computers and not, not playing games. I think people become afraid because it's a game, but it's a very, like, again, good discipline is good discipline. Good, you um, teachers, would, teachers know that. Yeah, and I would add, Adrian, um, your, your question is one that comes up frequently, you, you know, because people, who want to start a program or are interested in, uh, have concerns about that. Um, in addition to what Alicia was saying, I, you know, I would say, and I said this in a session earlier, is you, you can't teach a child to swim on the deck, right? You got to let them in the pool. And, and so, but you do it with a lifeguard there. You, you, you do it as safely as you can. You do it with, with expectations and with, with, uh, uh, modeling and teaching and and monitoring right. yeah um so i think you will find like like she was saying that that if you put those things in place and you start to let them in and, and doing it you're going to find that there are really relatively few infractions because students want to be able to keep playing and if they know that one of the consequences for for misbehaving is you know you're you're out or you're out for a while um and also, you know, you can remind parents if they're asking about that, that, you know, if kids are playing a pickup basketball game on a Saturday afternoon or, or a Thursday evening, right, they're saying stuff to each other, right, and they're right. doing things that can get hurt. But, but when you bring it into the school, mm -hmm. then you've got some more control over that, yeah. Right. Well, I have questions from teachers like, well, and they are aware of this bullying happens, right? And they're, they're enthusiastic about, you know, doing, you know, these clubs and it's like, okay, and the kids are all over it. So I had the request from them. It's like, awesome. But one of them just asked me, like, well, you know, something happens. One of these kids goes, kills himself, you know, as a result of bullying. How is the district going to protect me? How does the district protect any, anybody that that happens? That's that's the thing. This is not it's it's not an esport issue. It is a school issue. If a student is getting bullied to the point where they have suicidal ideation, then mm. that's a school issue. That's not an esport issue. Mm. And that's that's and I I I become protective over esports because I think it gets a bad rap in that. But bullying happens. Bullying's been happening on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all. You know, of but that. these are not sanctioned, you know, district sanctioned types of environments, right? This would be some something that is. It, it uh, happens, you know, they, they, get, they get bullied in the locker room. They get yeah. bullied on the football team. They get, yeah. you know, it's, bullying's it's, been happening it's, since since the beginning and at school. And schools are working to do that. It's not an esport. It's not an esport issue we know of hazing that happens in regular sports mm -hmm. and how does the school handle that and hazing happens bullying happens across the board it, it's not an east it's not isolated to esports yeah. I, i'm just seeing i'm just seeing, again i'm just doing my investigation right now but i'm just seeing how i would have to take something to the board say here's how this goes right because right. Uh, right. Yeah, have a, have a very clear policy and these are the expectations and so on and so forth, right? So, right. 
Uh, and then yeah, thank you for putting me in contact. To be careful that. Yeah. yeah, thank you for putting me in contact with your guys. I'm looking forward to that conversation next week. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. All right, thank awesome. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.